Hello everybody, welcome to this product demonstration of Supermachine. Supermachine makes it super easy to create high quality images using the latest artificial intelligence technology. We offer over 40 models and we're adding new models every single week. So this is just a demonstration of how to use Supermachine and how to make the most of the product. So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the first things you'll see when you come to supermachine.r is all of the different models that we offer. There are models for photorealism, models for anime, models for cartoon, and a bunch of different styles, which makes it super easy for you to really drill deep into the type of images that you want to create and make creating those images easy. So if I want to learn more about a specific model, all I have to do is click on that model. You'll see a few of the generations. You'll see a brief description. You can either hit start the magic to go directly to the generator to start generating, or you can hit the information uh, icon to then see more information about the model. You can click on individual uh, images and you can see information about the prompt that was used, um, the uh, you know the steps, the sampler, and so on and so on. So now we've shown individual models. Let's then come into Supermachine to show you the dashboard. Dashboard is very simple. You have select a model at the top here. You can look through all of the models, or you can hit view all models to see them in a grid. Hit the information if you want more information about a specific model, or you can simply click on one of the models to load it up within the system. Then we have the prompt, which is where you are telling the AI what you want to create. And you can upload an image as an image to image guideline if you want to do so. So for this, if I just want to create something very quickly, I can say, you know, um, glass bottle on a white table. And I can hit generate on this. And I should get some. So there we have four outputs from our glass bottle on a white table. And it's pretty good, right? We have a glass bottle on a white table. So it does what it says. But the magic of Supermachine really comes alive when you start looking at the advanced settings. So here you can set a negative prompt. Here you can set whether you want a random seed or whether you want to specify that. You can specify the creativity, which is like the guidance scale. And you can also take the steps from 20 to 80. Uh, you can also see we have various different aspect ratios for you to choose from. And then various different pixel sizes within those aspect ratios. Every time that you want to hit generate, you'll see that it will tell you how many credits it's gonna use. So for these four images, it's gonna use four credits. If I put the steps up, then it's going to use more because more steps requires more uh, compute power. And I think it's something that we'll go over in a minute that more steps doesn't necessarily mean a better image. Um, the other setting we have is the sampler, and we offer a lot of the samplers which are popular online. Two of the ones which I use mainly is Eula A, which we have as default, and we also have the DPM++ 2M Karas, which is also really great. The reason why I like these is one, they're fast, and two, they provide good quality images at a low step count. And if I'm trying to be resourceful, and get the most bang for my buck, then I can use these and not have to use, say, 80 steps because 80 steps is just overkill and it definitely isn't required. So this is a brief sort of overview of the editor. What we also have is we have albums where you can see everything without an album by default in the home. And then we can come in and we can see 
our albums by clicking and seeing what comes up. So we have our character pictures, we have our ghost mix, we have our individual characters, which I'll go over in a little more detail in a moment. Um, we have the search. If you just want to search a database of uh, stable diffusion images, we are using two APIs for this. So none of your images that you create with Supermachine go into the search. All of your images are private by default. They only become public if you come in to an album, you hit edit and you hit this toggle here. You hit this toggle here, it will create the public album and you'll get a link that you can share with your friends. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's easy to create a new album and obviously you can view all of the albums by hitting this button and they will load up here. I have a lot of albums, so it just takes a minute for these to load up for me. And you can see some of my earlier albums are here. Um, we also have the ability to you know, see your profile, see your credits, get information on the API, or contact us from this uh, profile icon in the top right. And then we also have the canvas, which can be quite cool to play with. Um, so let's have a look at steps and let's have a look at the canvas in more detail in the next section. It's really important to grasp the concept of all of the different samplers work slightly differently from taking the noise of an empty image and then filling it in based on the prompt that you provided. Now, not all samplers work in the same way, which is why you may find that a certain sampler takes longer to generate than another sampler. And what we have in Supermachine is a way for you to create your image by specifying the amount of steps. By default, we have 20 steps. And you know, there's a lot of talk online about, you know, are oh, these image generation tools, they use these 20 steps because it's the cheapest, but that's not, really the case, it's quite often the case that a 20 step image and an 80 step image using a sampler which works well at a lower step count produce same or similar images. And I'll show you this by generating two live now. So let's have a look at what we're gonna do. We're gonna generate four images. We're gonna use two of the samplers that I like using, the Eula Ancestral and the DPM++ 2M Karas. And let's see what images we create when we use 20 steps and when we use 80 steps. And you tell me whether there is a difference. So it's all about being smart with your prompt and smart with your input to create quality images that work for you and get you the best output so what I've done is I've come in to look at the Super Machine reality model that we have on Super Machine. I've clicked on one of the images here and you'll see that we have the prompt, we have the negative prompt, we have the model and we have all of the different settings here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the clone button, which is what I've already done to load this up in my generator. So you'll see we have the same prompt, the same negative prompt, the same step count as 30 and we also have the square aspect ratio. So for this demonstration, we're gonna go down to 20 and we're gonna generate one square image. And then what we are gonna do is we are going to pump this up to 80 and we're gonna generate an image. And you'll see that this is twice as costly as the 20 image. So we have the one output, we have the second one creating, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the DPM plus plus 2M Karis, and I'm gonna do the same uh, test with a 20 image. And we are gonna do a 80 image. So we can see from the Eula Ancestral, this is one of our images. And this is the second image. So you can see there's not really a lot of difference on here 
although sod's law on creating the image the 80 step here does look a lot better because you have this weird thing going on with the dress but we will try that again in a little while but you can see here when i use the dpm plus plus 2m chorus which i really like it's a really good uh sampler we have our 20 step one which creates an image like this, which looks pretty good to me. It's an awesome image of the female. And then we have the 80 step, which again, looks pretty good. But can you really tell? If I was to blind test you and show you this image and this image and say which one is 20 step and which one is 80 step, would you realistically be able to tell me the difference? I think probably not. So let's just go for generating four at a time on the Eula, just to try and prove my point that the 20 step can be as good as the 80 step because that initial test was not ideal um, for that. So we've loaded up the 20 step and we can load up the 80 step and we can see the difference. Okay, so we have these four generations. They look pretty cool. You know, they're perfectly fine images of this blonde female that we are creating. And if we get the 80 steps, which are just coming right now, we can also see they are also equally good. Now, again, if I was to blind test you, and show you four images and then show you four other images and say one of these is 20, one of these is 80. Do you know which is which? Um, I would be surprised if you told me and if I did a big sample size that we got the right answer every single time. So this is really the importance of samplers and schedulers and, and steps and all of that stuff. So for me, golden rule, if you're not really too much of an advanced user, stick to EULA A and stick to DPM plus plus 2M Karis. They are both quick and they both work incredibly well at a lower step count. So that means that you're gonna get more bang for your buck, you'll be able to do more generations and you'll be able to have more fun using Supermachine. The next thing I want to show you is how we can change an image with the Canvas tool. The Canvas tool allows us to really paint on top of an image. We can draw, we can remove things, and then we can fill those gaps with other things. And it's quite incredible to be able to create a brand new image based off a template for an existing image. Works kind of similarly to image to image, which we also offer if you just want to upload an image and then provide a prompt as well. But this is kind of more fun in a way of actually being able to draw on an image and see what the outputs look like. So let's have a quick look on how this works within Super Machine. Okay, so to do this, what we have to do, we can just hover over the image that we want to do. We click this paint, pencil paint icon, and it's going to load this image up into our canvas here. And then we can do what we want to do with the image. So we have this in the canvas, and we can go and we can say, okay, we want to erase it. And we can sort of start erasing part of the image to then have the AI uh, fill in later. So I'm not gonna be too careful here, um, purely because I just wanna get it done quick for the demonstration. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna er erase a bunch of the top of this image. And we're gonna come down here and we're gonna do like this. And we are going to draw as well, similarly, like this. And you'll notice I'm not being too careful doing that one for speed and two because you don't really need to be super careful when using a tool like this. So we've removed the top part of the image and then we can change our prompt slightly so we can say upper body shot uh flower dress red lipstick outstone nature absurd rares 
all I'm going to do is I'm going to delete some of that and I'll say beautiful sun, shine, blue sky, summer day. And we can then choose how we want this to work. So we have the strength. So we say, how much of an influence do we want the image to have on the generation? We're going to set this at 0 0.7. 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is a good start for this. We're going to use 2M Karas because that's something that I like to use. And we're going to put the steps as 30 because, you know, whilst I like to say 20 works great, 30 also works great. And I tend to find that 30 gives you a more complete image some of the time. So when I'm doing uh, demonstrations like this, it's just good to use that. So now we are going to generate from this image. We've hit generate. We have our four generations coming. And you will see one of the things that is unique to Super Machine is if your images don't generate or if you just want to cancel them, you can hit cancel generation here and it will return your credits for you. So if something has gone wrong with our system, you're not left out of pocket with your generations because it's going to generate these images uh, regardless. Uh, they're they're going to be in the queue for generation. Otherwise, you can just hit cancel and you see what we've done here. So we have our initial image. And because we've wiped out a lot of the top of the image, we have this beautiful background with the, uh, the sky and mountains in the background. It's changed the initial image based on what we have uh, provided. So this is really cool, really fun to play around with and just sort of change the composition of your images by using the, the canvas tool. And I guess whilst I'm here, if I want to then upscale any of these images, what I can do is I can choose whether I want to do the upscale without a face enhancer on it, or I can choose to add a face enhancer on it. And what this will do is it will take this image, which is a 512 by 512 image, and it will blow it up to 2048 by 2048. So the upscaler is forexing the image size. So you can use it in print, you can use it in web design, you can use it wherever you need to use it. So this is something that's super, super cool. Um, but what if we could then take the characters that we create and create consistent images across generations. That would be super cool, right? And that's something that we've been working on and something that we're excited to announce today. So let's have a look. One of the most common questions we get asked is usually about consistent characters and how to create consistent characters within your generation. If someone's creating a comic book or if somebody's creating a series of fashion designs and they want to use the same model, this can often be difficult. Uh, what we've done is we've created a bunch of different models that you can use to generate today. Um, so let's have a look at how this works. And we have big plans for this in the future. So this is just the start of what we have planned. And we're excited to share this with you now. So let's get into it. So you'll see on this page here, we have consistent characters. And if we scroll down, you can see we have a variety of male and female characters which you can use within your generations and get consistent outputs. So if I was to click on something like Darren, you can see that all the images of Darren keep the same facial features and the same sort of hair. So if I want to create images of Darren, what I need to do is I need to come to the information page, see what the... Uh, toggle is and you'll see here we have this part here we need to use in our prompts so for example if i wanted to create an image of uh 
Darren, I could say a photo of M4N2 um, at the beach in board shorts, smiling. enjoying the sunshine so i'll just put walking at the beach and we can choose what model we want and this is what makes this uh feature super super cool and super interesting is we can say okay i want to create a portrait i want the guy to be walking i'm just going to set this back to 20 just to show everyone who's a 20 hater that 20 still works um for a lot of these. And we're just gonna generate a few of these, right? So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna generate four, and then we're gonna generate a, another four after this. Just gonna queue these up for uh, the ability to see what we get. And we should get pictures of Darren, this completely mythical character who doesn't exist who we've trained a uh, model on and we're super excited about this because the method that we've used is model agnostic so you can create models using for example this reality model but if i want to use a anime model as well i can come in the same prompt and I can hit generate on this and we're going to get our outputs. So you see here, we're getting our outputs of Darren walking at the beach in his board shorts. So that's pretty cool. Quite happy with those. And if I generate a couple of these using the Super Machine anime model, you'll see that we're going to get an anime output of Darren walking at the beach. So these are super simple to use. You literally come in to the consistent character page. You choose what model you want to generate images of, and you can then generate those images. So for example, if I wanted to generate an image of Lucy Lee, I can come in I can see what that tag is down here. And I can copy that. And we can come back to our uh, Super Machine page. So you'll see here we have the anime style of uh, Darren walking at the beach. So this is quite fun. It's quite, you know, it, it's. It's a way for you to get your consistent characters across a bunch of different artwork. We're super excited to sort of give you this to play with today. So we could change this up and we could say a photo of Lucy Lee. We've copied what was said before and we could say exercising at the gym, uh, tight like your clothes, sweaty, um, smiling and i'll go into a bit of detail about how we've trained these in a moment um, i'm just hoping that we don't get an accidental nude because the way that we train these images to be good oh this is an anime model i wanted to do this on the uh super machine reality as well so let's just see what we have and we have these images, which will appear any second now. So we have Lucy at the gym. You'll see her bob haircut is there and the uh, the purplish tint on her hair, which we, we, we have coded in. Um, and we have some outputs, which you could use. So these are pretty cool. This is uh, the Lucy character. And again, we have the different outputs and pictures of Lucy. And you see something like this is a really cool image of Lucy in the gym. So yeah, this is our consistent characters, something that we are rolling out today. And I'm excited to give everyone access and the ability to play with that. So let's have a deeper chat 
about how we've created these images. Creating consistent characters is not simple, uh, it's not easy, but we've done it by creating these characters based off a prompt and a specific sort of design and look that we were after, and not based on any real photos of any real people. So these are completely unique. They are completely uh, mythical <laughs> in a way that you won't find anyone in the real world who, who looks like them. And the way that we've done this, if we go into the process a bit deeper, is we've really gone into detail on a prompt of what we want our character to look like. We've gone into detail on the eye, the jaw structure, the, the hair, the skin tone, et cetera, et cetera. And what we've done is we've used this prompt to generate hundreds and hundreds of individual images of our potential character. And we've done this in a bunch of different poses. So we've done like a medium pose, a, a close headshot pose, a full body pose, et cetera, et cetera, to get hundreds of these images that we can then use as our data set. So this takes a bit of time for us to do and get correct. So once we have our hundreds and hundreds of images, we then start the process of filtering out the images of ones which are bad, you know, there might be one with, you know, bad hands showing or an extra limb, et cetera, et cetera, or the skin might not be off or the hair might be not be off, et cetera. So it's very easy to go through and start deleting the obvious bad images. And what we really want to do is get these hundreds and hundreds of images down to a data set of about 25. So there's various methods of filtering that we do to go from having the hundreds and hundreds of images to then saying, okay, this one looks like the character we want to create. Does this next image also look like that character? If they look fairly similar, then we can say, okay, this is, we're getting there now. We're starting to realize and see the character that we want to, to make. So there is a lot of... Uh, manual work involved in systemizing and cutting down the large data set to a data set of 25. And once we have the data set of 25, we use a, a, a super special method um, to train this character. And then we can add that to our system, create the images to show you how you can do similar. And also then you are able to use the model within your generations. So this is how we've been doing the consistent characters. And the original images that we create are quite boring in a way because we want them on, you know, just like a natural gray background, like almost like the background <laughs> I have behind me here. Um, we don't want anything to influence the output of our training. So by having a boring background, it really acts as a blank canvas for when we actually want to do the generations. So having the black, blank background is important. And secondly, we train these as uh, nude images. So we, we want all of these characters to be nude during the generations. The reason why we do this as well is because say we had a bunch of generations where the model is wearing like a turtleneck, um, then that's going to bias what people try and generate with it. So if you sort of take all of that away, strip the model, <laughs> literally strip the model, um, then it's going to give you the best uh, outputs possible and it'll be the most malleable model. So you'll be able to specify, you know, ski clothing, you know, whatever, whatever clothing you want, you'll be able to specify and get the model to use that clothing. So we anticipate that we're going to be creating more and more of these models in the future. We're going to be looking at creating some of like uh, mythical type models as well. At the moment, we've done like male, female, and we've sort of experimented with creating like an elf. But uh, we, we anticipate seeing more like fantasy style models in the future as well for people to be able to, to train on top of. So this is the consistent characters that we have, and we're, we're super excited to sort of showcase and, and uh, have that as part of the product. So you'll be able to access that from the dashboard as well, and you'll be able to generate your images. 
The final thing to really say is Supersheen is very simple to use. Using the folder and album system, you can uh, organize your private creations and make them public if you want to, or just keep them in their own folders. If you need to delete images, we also have a bulk deletion tool where you can literally go through and you can highlight the ones that you want to delete like this and then you can hit bulk delete and it will start removing those from the system so super machine very very easy to use we're adding new models every friday to see what the latest model is simply hit the updates button in the top right and you'll see what we've added and you'll be able to try it out for yourself um yeah, I hope that's uh, explained the product to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below um, as we are excited to keep improving the product. And we're very excited about the direction of where we're going with consistent characters and having that available to everyone. Thank you.